Warning, issues have occurred to storage pool one. Was a very scary message to receive about my Synology petabyte server. Although upon investigating, the message just said, volume one is running low on space. That's right, I pretty much filled it. Therefore, this video is sponsored by Synology. If you haven't seen the previous video, I'll do a quick recap. I was supplied with a HD 6500 unit from Synology, which is a 60 drive storage server. It was fully loaded with 60 16 terabyte drives, giving me a raw storage total of 960 terabytes, just shy of a petabyte. So I named it Petabyte because close enough. And on it, I was able to fit pretty much everything I'd filmed for Slow Mo Guys between the years of 2010 and 2022. After I put up that video, I received a very nice email from Will of Space Rex, whose channel specializes in Synology and other NAS related videos. He sent me some tips based on how I'd set it up. He's like, yeah, you might want to change a couple of things. So I ended up with five RAID arrays of 12 drives each in RAID 6 each. So potentially I could lose two drives in each pack of 12 and still wouldn't lose any data. So pretty high redundancy, which when you're dealing with so many drives, significantly reduces the total amount of usable space. It threw up the low storage space warning at 80% filled, which also when you look at it is a colossal amount of space still left. It's like a hundred terabytes is still available, but because each drive is reaching the same level of full, the performance could potentially go down. So you don't really want to go much higher than that in terms of capacity. So I did delete some files. I deleted some video conversions from the Phantom raw files, which I can just make again, as long as I keep the raw. Um, but then over time, as time went by, it started creeping up again and I ended up about 90% full at the point where I was just like, I don't want to delete anymore. So when I was making my original video, I mentioned that one of the features of the HD 6500 system is that you can add expansion units. And as I was learning about all that stuff and, and talking about it in the video, I, in the back of my mind, knew that one day I would need one. So I went on YouTube and I started looking up videos of the expansion unit and I couldn't find any. So I got in touch with Synology and I said, <laughs> uh, obviously I filled it. Um, I don't see a lot of content around the procedure and just it, the general use of the expansion unit. Do you fancy sending one over fully loaded? And they very kindly said yes. So why don't we set up the expansion unit? I've got the name of it here. The uh, original is called the HD 6500, and the expansion unit is called the RX 6022 SAS, which I've clearly not yet memorized. I kept the HD 6500 in this sound dampened little cabinet that I can access from both sides, and it massively cuts down on the, the screeching power supplies that you find on rack mounted gear. Although very short sightedly, I didn't plan for having this expansion unit going in anytime soon, and I've left a bunch of 1U gaps between a lot of the equipment and I need a big 4U space to put the expansion unit above the HD 6500. And what that means is basically I have to take everything out. To do that, I'm going to take out every single drive just to massively cut down on the weight. It's normally recommended two people put this thing in and out of server racks, but I can do it on my own as long as it's not I've got 60 drives in it. And this will be a nice opportunity to see 120 16 terabyte drives all together. Jeez. But the first petabyte is out. The expansion unit has a very similar look to the main HD 6500. Identical size and number of bays, but as you can see on the back, completely different. Just a SAS in and out and a display letting you know what number expansion unit that is because you can add four of these to each HD 6500. After lowering the rails in the rack, I nicked a cushion from the sofa in the living room and used it as a makeshift jack to hold up the HD 6500 as I attached it back to the rails. Let's not go in there. A considerable amount of effort just to lower it by one step in the rack. Next up, I put in the rails for the expansion unit. I'm now at twice the height as before, so I'm obviously going to nick another cushion from the couch, which once again made it shockingly easy to align the rails. As I was pulling it towards me from the back, watching it slide across the top of that cushion, I briefly thought, oh, what about static? That can't be good. But thankfully, all was fine. Definitely not the recommended way to slide servers into a rack. I remember back in the day, it always being a huge inconvenience to need to buy a new drive because they're so expensive. So the novelty of unboxing 60 at once has still not worn off on me. 
And this is all drives from both units together, 1920 terabytes. And to connect the two units together is this mini SAS cable, which I've only ever used in the past to connect LTO tape decks together. Okay, I've put all the new drives in front of the old drive, so I'm gonna load up the expansion unit first. Next, I placed each drive into its little plastic caddy and slotted them all in, SME approved. Next up, I put all the original drives back into the original unit. I did number these drives a while ago, just in case I had to put them all in the exact same spot they came out of. But from what I've been reading, it doesn't actually matter which slots you put them in. The unit will detect each drive's serial number and boot up the RAID, even if they've all been scrambled about. This cabinet now weighs an absolute ton. It has wheels, but it's on carpet, so to slide it around, I've taken to lying down on the floor and pushing off one of the nearby walls to get it into place. Both units have redundant modular power supplies, and uh, if one of these fails, automatically fails over to the second one. So now I have four power supplies for two units. Okay, here's the original unit, the HD6500, and I'll be plugging in SAS in to the SAS primary here. And the expansion unit SAS out will go into the SAS secondary of the main unit. Yeah, it's a 19% excuse me. I wasn't entirely sure what kind of wattage my battery backup could handle. So just for a laugh, I booted up both units to see the power draw. 72. Oh, I think it's gonna overload. Yep. That's not good. I then quickly moved the expansion unit to a separate UPS. So the expansion unit has identified itself as number one. If I had more, I would connect the primary of the HD6500 to the first unit, and then I would connect the secondary to the furthest unit. So if I had four, this cable would go all the way up to the top one, or the bottom one, and then the ins and outs of the ones in between would be connected to each other. So the out of this would run into unit number two on its import, etc. These multi-path connections also offer redundancy if any of these mini SAS cables or the ports fail, because technically every unit in the stack would be connected to two different units. Let's close that so we can hear something. Next, I logged into DSM using my usual credentials, and there it was just sat there, the expansion unit and all of its drives without me having to press anything, just showed up immediately. So let's create a new storage pool, I guess. There are ways under certain circumstances to expand a storage pool size, make the volume larger, but I wasn't entirely sure whether that would work across two units, and I didn't want to irreversibly damage my original storage volume because that would be a real faff to put everything back on there. I also like the idea of making a completely separate storage pool because that way in a pinch I can access the original 60 drives without even turning on the expansion unit if I don't need to. If I know the file I'm after is on the original unit. I'm going to keep slightly less critical stuff on this expansion unit so I decided on three RAID arrays each of 20 drives which means rebuilding one of these RAIDs will take quite a bit longer than it would on my original unit, but it will give me a bit more capacity. A total raw storage of 804 terabytes. Once everything was set and I mounted the new volume on my Mac and my PC, I started moving files onto it. Performance wise, very similar speeds to my original unit, regularly going over one gigabyte per second from a single machine. And in the past I have seen two gigabytes per second if I'm copying from my Mac and my PC at the same time made possible by the fact that the switch in my office has a 25 gigabit connection to both the HD6500 and my Mac Pro. And one thing I love about copying files from the original petabyte to the expansion is that I can start that process in DSM and then the units just talk to each other. I don't actually need any of my machines to stay on and I can even monitor that progress from my phone using the app. Here on this graph, you can see the read and write activity of the volume with reads being consistently around a gigabyte and the occasional write spike of two gigabytes. Meanwhile, the network activity is pretty much zero. It's the occasional few kilobytes, which I assume is just the data it's pulling to show me this graph. The main benefits I see with adding an expansion unit over just getting a second HD6500 entirely is that it effectively now acts as though it was a single box of 120 drives total. And because it doesn't have all of the typical server stuff like the beefy CPU, all of that RAM, it draws way less power than 
the HD 6500 itself, which I found to consistently use when it's spun up all the drives, it will easily hit like 900 watts. The expansion unit, when all of its drives are spun up and I'm copying files to it, it's closer to 500 watts. So it's, it's drawing almost half the power of the main unit. And because it doesn't need all that beefy server stuff, it's just communicating with the original beefy server stuff. It's cheaper than buying a new HD 6500. Well, there we go. I am sorted. I don't think Synology will need to worry about receiving an email from me for an extremely long time. I would predict definitely not before 2038. So once again, and I assume for the final time, huge thanks to Synology for supplying me with a fully loaded RX 6022 SAS to go along with my HD 6500. As always, there's a link to read about these products in the description. If you have a huge data problem like me, you might be interested in this solution. As always, thank you very much for watching these behind the scenes videos. They're quite nerdy, but I'm glad there's such an audience for them. Love you lots. See you next time.